Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to the Friday Night Lights, episode number three. And uh, we are discussing today another interesting topic for the debate. It is uh, who is the greatest Cardiff City manager of all time? Uh, joining me to discuss this topic, as always, on a Friday night, is uh, none other than uh, Pan, a.k.a. the Greek Leak. How are you, my friends? Very good, mate. Yeah, very good sight. Yeah, nice to be on another show. Yeah, looking forward to it again. Indeed, mate. That in fact, it's going to work out. It's going to be the second one in a row that we've ended up pre-recording before time, which was not actually the plan when we talked about doing the Friday show. But as things have worked no. out, um, obviously this Friday or when this episode comes out, we're recording something super secret, super super fun. Though it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time, and I'm looking forward to people seeing the finished product. But uh, they get a pre-recorded episode. It won't do them any harm, I'm sure. But it's an interesting topic, mate. Interesting topic, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I think, I think, you know, I, I sort of looked at it. You know, I know you've done the header, like you know, but I looked at it from my time, you know, and and that's. I think a lot of fans really can only sort of look on the time they started going down the city. So. You know, again, you know, with a wide range of uh, age ranges watching the podcast and things, you know, it'll, everyone will have different kind of um, views on it based on who they know. And I think, to be fair, as I said, for a lot of generations, it's, you go back to when we won the FA Cup. You know, obviously, that's probably our greatest achievement. But, I mean, you know, I as I said in a previous podcast, I started going down in 1980. So, um I've looked at it from the point of view of trying to look at it. so our greatest manager, say the last forty odd years, who's yeah. kind of like I, 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 and we've we've you know, and I think you've got to look at it on promotions and and if we got to a cup final, you know, obviously we've had plenty of managers, but I think you've got to focus. Obviously, if you're looking at the best managers, you've got to remember the guys who took you up, whether it's from the old fourth division or or into the the Premier League. So. That's how I sort of looked at his side. Um, you know, obviously, I, I don't know with yourself in terms of when you started, you know, going down the city or when you were familiar with certain managers going down there. Um, so my the first manager, which I remember, was, well, when I started going, was Eddie May. And, um, like, that was... And it's funny you mentioned, actually, like, about, obviously, people go with what they know, don't they? Obviously, you can only base it on kind of what you know, unless you're a real history buff who kind of digs deep yeah. into the past eras and stuff. But like I was talking to someone the other day about you often get it with them um, with players now when people do their greatest ever Premier League team or you know whatever. Um you'll see a lot of players in the last sort of 10 years and a lot of players pre that get excluded because there's yeah. a lot of recency bias. But I also think people have a bit of a nostalgia bias as well. So yeah. you can't because you look back on your sort of your twenties, your thirties, whatever it may be, as like whatever's like you, that sort of fond time of following your football club, particularly, and you're gonna automatically be kind of drawn to those managers, those players, those moments because they were enjoyable moments in your life. So yes. I am kind of I'm interested in just this kind of. What everybody, what everybody's take is, because there is a range of ages which watch the channel. From you know, there's people sort of our age. Like I know you're a bit older than me, but like generally, you know, <laughs> 40, 40, 50 or whatever. And then there's yeah. you know, there's sort of that eighteen to sort of twenty five, and there's there's a couple of youngsters as well who watch it. So obviously, their experience of managers will be very recent. It's a bit like the Wales yeah. thing, which we discussed the other week. Like my yeah. kids. With Wales, only no qualifying for tournaments. So, like yeah. when we didn't qualify this time, they were almost it was like a bit of a shock. Whereas yeah. for people yeah. like us, we never thought we were ever going to do it. So those yeah, tournaments exactly. that we did get to became a bigger thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, no, mean, I think I think. Go on. I was just going to say, like Eddie May for me is the kind of. I think technically, I think the first game I went to watch with my dad was in the Frank Burroughs era, but sort of yeah. when I began to go regularly, reg, semi-regularly probably as a, as a kid, 
was the, the yeah. kind of Eddie May period and and the second Frank Burrows period. But the, I think yeah. I might have seen a game or two in in that sort of Frank Burrows yeah. 87, 88 sort of year. I think um, I think yeah. I, I did ask my mum the other day, but she didn't have a clue. Was uh, I think my first game was about eight around November eighty seven sometime with my dad because it was for my birthday yeah. and we went down there. Uh, in the family, and so that would have been Frank Frank Burrows' era, then. So, yeah, that would have been a Frank Burrows game. But then I didn't go back. I don't think, probably for another couple of years. Yeah. Certainly, as a as a fan, my earliest yeah. memories, manager wise, is is like Eddie Mays, Barmy Army. That was yeah. Yeah. that was yeah. my yeah. earliest yeah. memory. Um, I think in terms of I think going, going, go. well, I think going back, you know, I was going to say like you know with with the uh, Eddie May with. You know, going back to when I went down, you know, obviously the first couple of years were pretty bleak. You know, we had you know, different managers like Richie Morgan when I went down and it was pretty awful. So to be honest, you were, the crowds were really bad. But when Len, when Len, Len Ashes came in, you know, and, and he was a guy uh, played a lot of games for Sunderland. You know, he was a really good footballer, played hundreds of games for Sunderland. Uh, and he he actually bought in Liverpool. He he managed Newport before us, and and that was a time when John Aldridge, you know, used to play, uh, went on to play for Liverpool. John Aldridge was at Newport. And they got to the quarterfinal of the Cup Winners' Cup. So Len Astros had a bit of pedigree before mm. he came to us, and um, that was my like first real experience. Like you said about nostalgia, for me that was the moment. A lot of fans my age in their fifties who, who went down in the eighties would look back on really fondly because we didn't have any money. So Len came in and he sort of put a team together. We had Andy Dibble in goals, who was, you know, a fantastic young 17-year-old keeper. Uh, I remember being a mascot and scoring a goal from the penalty, penalty spot against him. That was uh, that was fantastic. I think we beat Cambridge that day, 5-1. And we had Lyndon Jones, who was Welsh, uh, right back. Paul Bowden, who obviously went to play for Wales, missed that penalty against Romania. You had Phil Dwyer, who's a legend down the city, one of the you know our great players, like you know, fantastic uh, competitor. And then and then Len Ashers, he signed two players for Manchester City. Now yeah, they they were the Bennett brothers, Gary Bennett, uh, centre half, and Dave Bennett. And Dave Bennett has been my greatest player of all time, you know, because down the city he was a fantastic winger, absolutely brilliant. Went on to play the Coventry when they won the FA Cup. They beat Tottenham, I think, in 87. And just to put you in perspective, that guy, he was a free transfer. If you actually saw him play, so I, you'd look at him in today's market as being valued at 20 million quid. He was that special on the ball. He was a, he was a, every time he had the ball, everyone got off their seats, you know, if you're in the grandstand, which I was at that time. I had a seat tick. I was in the Bob Bank standing. But we, you know, he was a fantastic. And then we had other players like Jeff Emmer and Bob Hatton, and they both scored a hatful of goals. Um, Jeff Emmer. So Len Ashurst, that that season we went up. I think we came second to Portsmouth, um, and Huddersfield came third. And that was that was the first memory I had. So Len Ashurst, and then obviously you mentioned Frank Burrows, which was that. It's a shame he didn't go down because that was the promotion year as well, 87, 88, and Frank came in, and um, and again Frank. A fantastic uh, man. He was, he was so passionate, and the fans really loved him. Absolutely adored Frank Burrows. And I think you know he was he galvanised that team again with no money, um, but he, he again he, he put some players together which were absolutely outstanding. I mean, we had like players like George Woods, who was a Scotland international. Obviously, he, he was a free transfer. Mike Ford. He went to Oxford after he played well for us. For about you know 150 grand and we had alan curtis who was a, a swansea man but he was absolutely brilliant for cardiff and and obviously frank got us up from i think the old fourth division we came for uh second and frank you know to be fair was like i said to you he was, he was absolutely adored so yeah at that point when you start to go down and then you know that's a shame because you would have i think you would have that season was amazing especially if you know, i was a young lad i was going away then because i was 17 mm -hmm. 18. And I was going to all the way matches. So um, those two. And then you mentioned about Eddie May then, Si. So what was what was that like for you? I just remember that sort of going down with my dad 
and just the uh, certain chants stuck out and and i think like i was just i was just thinking then as you were talking like thinking when you said you when you were 16 17 i was like when what sort of age or what era was i did i start going you know with friends and stuff because i used to i remember i used to play football on a saturday morning up in penturk or around cardiff and then we'd like yeah. rush off or i'd go to my mate's house we'd have a shower and then we'd be off to try and you know get into town or whatever or into ninian park on the train and that was more sort of 96 97 and we had a like a that that 96 97 season which was the first season where i went like a few times on my own we had yeah. um, a couple of managers and and obviously kumar was the owner which is something which sticks out to me massively um, oh yeah but then what's interesting to me is like a lot of the i was just looking um at that squad earlier a lot of those well certainly a handful of those players now i sort of call friends or also have ended up being had the you know being lucky enough to to interview like like jimmy rollo and and people like that is um obviously lee jarman and and uh, a couple of others and there's a couple which i've got lined up as well for the future yeah which kind of fall into that side. Obviously, Scott Young was in there as a youngster as well. It's um, it's difficult, isn't it? So I was just who was the manager in ninety six, ninety seven? And we had Phil Neal, Russell Osman, and uh, Kenny Hibbert yeah. during that season. They first yeah, seven. Kenny, Kenny Hibbert's one. He, we had so many during that period, in it. You know, uh, Phil Neal was a disaster. I think before Phil, it was Kenny Hibbert. Actually, Eddie May came back actually, or he was. I just sort of managed a bit in ninety five. Kenny Hibbert, Phil Neal, Russell Osman. And then Frank again, you know, in 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 ninety eight. Um, so yeah, we went through a load of managers in that period, like Billy Air um, as well. Uh, God rest him soul. You know, he was mainly an assistant manager, but he, he did manage us for a short period of time. So we, we had a really struggle in period um, in the sort of early nineties, late nineties there. So, I, but I mean, going back to Eddie May, just you know, again talking about Frank Burrows. The passion from the city fans during that period of time, especially away. I mean, we were taking two, three, four thousand away games, and it was it was out of this world because everyone loved Eddie May. I mean, Eddie May had a fantastic career at Wrexham. Um, a lot of people forget, like he was part of the side in for Wrexham, who played in the court final of the Cup Winners' Cup when they actually only went out over two legs to Anderlecht. So, you know, Eddie May was experienced at lower leagues. So he had a lot of knowledge of, of bringing in players who, who could sort of get us out of, of divisions. So, you know, during that time, you know, Derek Brazil, um, he was signed for Man United. Um, you know, we had um, other players like sort of Kevin Radcliffe, who used to be Captain Everton. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, these are the type of players we had. And he did a fantastic job. I think Blakey was there at that period of time. Um, so... Eddie May, for me, again, like Frank Burroughs, were two guys who I would put in the top bracket of my period starting to watch the city of being the, 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 the managers who the fans felt more of a connection with than the majority of the managers we've had over you know, the last 40 odd years. The passion the fans had for those managers was unbelievable. Like, you know, so I think that period that Frank Burroughs and Eddie May, if people were watching those games, fans, then I think they would have said that was that was a really great period for us, um, and then we went then we went on to obviously Sam Maman coming in in the late nineties uh, with Bobby Gould initially, but then we had a bit of a success in the in the early two thousands then with Alan Cork, so um, you know Alan Cork came in and he got us promoted. I wasn't like a big fan of Alan Cork, like obviously he was ex Wimbledon player, so Sam Maman knew him well. You know, obviously, at the end of the day, they must have had a good relationship, you know, because he knew him so well as being the owner of Wimbledon. But uh, we got a promotion with Alan Cork as well. So that that was a great, great time as well. And and then, and what did you, and Lenny Lawrence then after? What, I mean, what about so, that time as well? Here's a, here's a question for you then, mate. Um, I know it's on your list. Of, you sent me, obviously, sent me like a list of managers, like a short list, if you like. Of kind of your opinion yeah. of the sort of the better managers that kind of have had and i noticed that dave jones wasn't on that list now i find that really interesting so just before we switch 
onto that conversation. Yeah. I wanted yeah, to yeah. make mention of um of Lewis at uh, Lewis of Lenny Lawrence. So for, in my opinion, Lenny Lawrence is period at the club. If it wasn't for Lenny Lawrence and the squad that he built, but also that kind of Alan Cork built and then Lenny Lawrence put the sort of finishing touches to without that yeah. squad and those particularly Lenny Lawrence as the manager, I don't think the Cardiff City football team would be where it is now. Like they laid the yeah. foundations for us to be yeah. consistently in the championship, to be, you know, have a couple of stints in the Premier League. At that point, if we had, for instance, lost that playoff final, yeah, a lot of those players would have been sold. There was a lot of financial hardship. And I, I kind of tease Andy all the time and say, like, you know, if, if you hadn't scored that goal, the club would have fallen <laughs> apart and we'd have been, you know, and in an yeah. administration yeah. and all sorts of things because it was that kind of do or die almost off the pitch. But I think, yeah. yeah, and when you speak to people who played under Lenny Lawrence, like how um, how he went about his business, how he treated people, how he how he conducted himself in those really yeah. high pressure moments, I think speaks very highly of of him. And I think um, also when we talk about other managers, you know, there's been moments when those managers have come under pressure and maybe they haven't covered themselves in glory. You know, I know Andy fell out with Dave Jones because Dave made him uh, train with the 21s and he wasn't part of his yeah. plans. Yeah. And But yeah. Andy Andy said says now with hindsight that, you know, he accepts that he wasn't part of the plans. That's, that's football. But he didn't like the way that he went about it and the way that he basically just cut him off and you know ignored yeah. him didn't yeah. speak to him and, and i understand that but like it's an interesting one to me because really as an adult lenny lawrence dave jones time was some of my most enjoyable moments as a football fan even though yeah. with dave yeah. jones we, we didn't get over the line and we had so many le so many like falls at the final hurdle and Dave Jones. It was painful. Yeah. But it was also some of the most enjoyable football to watch. It was my most, I think still my most enjoyable time as a Cardiff fan, possibly because of my age and my situation at that time. But even under Malky, I loved Malky, but I kind of for me personally, I kind of made the trade off that the football was pretty shit. But we were yeah. winning. Yeah. And yes. I think this is something I talked about with Bullet last year was people accept methodical football, shall we say, if you're winning. But if you're not winning, then the style of football becomes a conversation to be had. Um, and I think under Malky, by and large, the football was not great, but he got mm. us over the line. He got yeah. us to the was, Premier League. He got, he got Not success. just got us there. Yeah. He won, you know, he won the championship title, which obviously yeah. was a massive achievement. We, so it's an yeah. interesting conversation. But talk to me about Dave, why Dave Jones isn't on your shortlist. Yeah, I think um, you know, Dave Jones, when I it depends what category you want to put him in. I, I looked at different categories. So I I looked at my favorite manager at Cardiff City of all time. In mm -hmm. terms of the connection I had with the manager and other fans, I, you know, that's the impression I that, that I wanted to say is say that for me, it's Frank Burroughs, the passion that the Frank fans had and the connection they had with Frank was only a little bit. I, it's hard for me because Eddie May was, again was there was a great connection, but for me, I just felt with Frank, it was something special. Len yeah. Ashurst obviously did fantastically well. You know, Len Ashurst put a, a side together of, of free transfers. Some, like I said, some of those guys could have been worth 20 million today's market. He was that good at spotting, you know, talent in the lower leagues. Mm. But there was no real connection there with, with Len Ashurst in the same way as Frank. So that's what I was trying to sort of say there, Size. For me, the fans' connection with the manager, for me, would have to be Frank Burroughs and Eddie May. And you could sort of split them by your hairs, you know, length, breadth, in terms of who thinks Eddie May, you know, was better. Or so that's what I've done. But Dave Jones, I'm looking at it on success 
And I know we haven't talked about all the managers because we no. mentioned a couple. But Dave Jones, for me, has been the most successful manager at Cardiff City since I've been going down in the last 44, 40 odd years. Because, like you said, it was the best football. And what Dave Jones did, you know, and what I and I can sort of say in terms of what I didn't like about him was he had that kind of aloofness. I always remember, you know, I had a great opportunity one year to go down the Celtic Manor. And, uh, you know, I was a massive Cardiff fan, saw Dave Jones down with his family. Didn't want to disturb him. It was a Christmas meal, obviously. But just wanted to say, you know, hello. Or but you could sort of see, you know, even on that happy day, I wasn't going to bother him and ask for but he just he just got that persona of being very offish. And I think he was really offish with the press. He talked to Terry Phillips. You know, he was a really iffy time. And, and Terry Phillips is the nicest guy you can imagine. Yes, he's a journalist. But there was there was a disconnect between Dave Jones, I think, to a degree, and the fan. That, you know, he was very professional in his job. I mean, he came into that job. We were like 60 million in debt. We had to have free transfers. We couldn't sign players. Dave Jones quoted recently in an online interview that he had, he actually he had to look for free transfers or players who were like gamblers, ex-gamblers, alcoholics kind of thing, who were waifs and strays, as he put it. Yeah. You know, and and he took a risk with you know those type of players. And look who we you know Potter or you know Chopra Bellamy. All these type of players who play for it were absolutely top quality. And what in you know, I've got to say, I don't know, Dave Jones for me is our most successful manager in that period, you know, between the decades of 80s and, and now. So in, yeah, that's that, interesting that, with it though, Med, is he like he's the most successful man kind of city manager, but he didn't actually have success, like he never got promoted or he won a trophy no. and that's why i find no. him particularly really almost like a fascinating case study with with all the list of different cardiff managers but much like lenny lawrence i think set the foundations for what we see today as an established championship club etc i think dave yeah. jones set the foundations for the premier league promotion yeah. that obviously malky got and then later uh, Neil Warner achieved and I think yeah yeah sometimes those managers they don't achieve what they would like to or, or what their aim was but it's what they put in place has a knock-on yes. effect for the man who takes over you know sometimes yeah. a manager can come in and he can be like oh my god look at the state of this place but then other times yeah. they, a manager can come in and there's a bit of a base there and I think in fairness to Dave Jones he left you know he, the football club might have been in a certain way financially as it always seems to be but i think on yeah. the pitch it was in relatively you know relatively good shape i, I would say i would yeah. you know we we'd only you know very marginally missed that one playoffs and promotion and things like that under him and i think yeah. it was it got to the point didn't it with dave jones where you've kind of you felt like it just wasn't going to happen under him for whatever reason, no, no. which is unfortunate I, I, because I th I think that would have been the perfect way for his sort of his era at Cardiff City to end would have been with a promotion because I think yeah. he came so close so many times. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you. I think what I was trying to say when saying successful implies that yeah. it has to be promotion. But I think, like you said, Sai, he came in at the one of the worst times, you know, in terms of our debt, you know, we didn't have money. Sam, a man told him, you know, the, go, go, you know, he said to him, go out and get X player. And it turns out when Ridsdale's ringing them, they're on 50 grand a week and Sam can only offer two, two grand. You know, this was the scenario that Dave Jones had. He had mm. to try and, you know, Sam, a man, uh, he was crazy, but you know, he had, they had a good relationship, but uh, I think the fact that Sam was trying to go for players, that were on a different planet to the budget we had. So, you know, Dave Jones, I think, what I meant by successful is he created that kind of uh, pathway that kind of went on of, of success. Uh, you know, we got to the finals in with the FA Cup. You know, obviously we didn't win it. I'd say Malky was more successful in terms of, you know, we had the League Cup final as well, but I think the promotions... 
achievement exactly. in that terms of way. But I I look at it from the point of view as what the play the the way we played football. Sorry, you know the players we had on the. I don't. I haven't seen players like that down the city. You know, um, in my time, other than the Dave Jones period, yeah, we had one or two players here and there. You know, but I think for that reason, I would say he's the most successful because of what he brought to us. You know, with yeah. our profile, our profile went up by twofold because, like I said, Bellamy's of this world coming to the club, and Chopra was amazing. You know, and these these guys galvanised us, didn't they? Well, remember as well, like Dave Jones, still the only manager who ever got a tune out of jay bothroyd consistently yeah now jay yes. is a supremely talented footballer su supremely talented man i think he's an excellent pundit um and he's yeah. he's, a, he's a cool dude i i really enjoy talking to him however yeah. like dave jones is the only one who got a consistent tune out of him as a player and in fact in dave yes. jones's final season jay bothroyd scored 20, 18 goals in the league 20 in all competitions and got called up for the england side in the championship which was pretty is yeah. still pretty unheard of you know you don't yeah. see yeah. many championship players get called up so look dave jones to me isn't the greatest back card city manager of all time but the only the th reason time. the only reason for that i think he's in the conversation and i think the one thing which probably separates him from a couple of others is the the trophies the actual achievements getting over the line you yeah. know the winning winning those big moments and his relationship with the fans like we're going to talk about malky in a minute now like malky's relationship with the fans was incredible and that yeah. was a big part i believe in that season where we got promoted under malky the relationship between the fans and the team was was unbelievable like we we it was like we were just churning out one nails two ones last minute goals yeah. all season it felt like and it you know in that that period towards the end of the season it just felt like i'm sure it probably wasn't as many one nil victories as as it felt like now with <laughs> like looking back but it felt like it was every week one nil you yeah. know kenny miller or don cowie or someone and and obviously ernie came back in that period as well um yeah i loved marky mckay and i think one of the high profile mistakes that vincent tan has made during his time at cardiff was sacking malky mckay when he did i understand that obviously stuff came out afterwards and he probably had to be sacked you know due to the those things but from a purely football point of view which is what it was kind of sold as at the time yeah we'd never been in the relegation zone in the premier league we had picked up a couple of victories recently there wasn't a reason i didn't think from a football point of view to sack him yeah. when we did and i think we paid the price for that or certainly we paid the yeah. price for when we sacked him we should have brought in somebody of the elk of like a sam allardyce or someone like that who will just keep you up at all costs and i think yeah. if we had done that and if we had stayed up that season i do believe that we'd have established ourselves as a premier league club because we had a lot of things yeah in place we had some good young players but malky mckay as, as a football man manager for cardiff i think yeah. you have to put him um you know you have to put him up yeah. in, in the sort of conversation for yeah i agree with you know, you. even I though he was only there for two two years he was only there but what yeah. he achieved and, in that I, short and, period. and the cynic in me side to be honest with you and, and maybe i shouldn't say this but i will is that obviously you're absolutely right you know more success than dave jones and mm -hmm. and loved by the fans and i think the backstory is that you know with the the signings that we made like the corneliuses of this world where we signed a great million i think some of the signings you know and obviously ian, ian moody was there with malky wasn't he i think that sam uh, the tan felt that you know these guys who were coming in for big big money and big wages had to be playing and had to be performing and you know as well as anyone that if you look at the premier league they'll go out and spend i know the money's gone up you know in terms of spending but you know with transfers there's no guarantees whoever you sign no you might get five rights and two wrong yeah and 
And if you look at the Gary Medells of this world, you know, he had he's had a very successful career. You know, he went yeah. to Italy. He's, he's, he's highly, you know, these there's plenty of guys that came in that, you know, you would say they've done a really good job. And Malky was part of that in terms of signing. So I think the backstory is, Si, that Tan was looking for a way to get him out. Now, as yeah. much as, you know, what came out was not right, uh, and, and Malky was right in terms of, I think they wouldn't even have looked for it if Tan had a different view of Malky and and uh, and Moody. And he could have got, you know, he, I, I, if it was me, I so in hindsight, he could have got sacked Moody and taken back control of the transfers and then had a maybe a closer relationship with Malky. Because I think Malky and Moody were kind of, you know... A package deal, weren't they? Yeah, they yeah. And I think that's where they all, all fell apart. So it, I, in our history, we look back and say, you know, if only Malky was still there during that time, we could have survived, you know, or we, we, we you know, in that Premier League and, and, and gone on, like, you know, and I think I'd have to agree with you uh, that Malky Mackay, in terms of how the fans viewed him and the success he had, you know, has to be regarded in the recent decades, say the last five decades, as, as up there as our most successful in terms of that, you know, as I said, Dave Jones should get a lot of credit, but I think the fans don't really like Dave Jones no, as it. a person. Which you know, but I think Dave Jones is a man as a manager and as a professional has to be up there as well because of what he did. So it's a it's a fine line. But it'll be interesting what the fans think because then obviously we ended up with Neil Warnock. Then uh, just before should, we go on to uh, Neil Warnock, mate, sorry to interrupt you. I want to just tell this story yeah. because I um, you mentioned Cornelius, and I think this played a massive part in how that whole. Uh, situation ended up playing out um so i spoke to someone recently from who's not actually at the football club anymore but they worked very closely with vincent tan and, and the club and, and the people within the hierarchy um and they said there was a moment um in the run-up to the liverpool game and and when you know when Mackay got sacked where um basically malky Mackay was asked in an interview why he wasn't playing uh andreas cornelius and he said, you know, he's a young lad. He's come to the different country. He's one for the future. He is going to, you know, he's going to be a, a top player, but we've got to give him time. Something along those lines, yeah. obviously paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, and apparently Vincent Tan was absolutely furious at that interview and those comments because he had just spent £8 million or whatever it was on a striker. In his mind, he spent £8 million on a striker. They should be playing and they should be scoring and unfortunately, yeah. that little kind of thing encapsulates a lot of the problems that the football club has had in the last however many years Vincent Tan has been there, because he's got yeah. a lack of under a lack of understanding of football yes. and the way the way that it works. Because you know, even like people like yourself and me and me, like who are not working in football, but we've watched a lot of football and we've you know, grown up watching football and, and whatnot. Like, we we understand that. You know, he was a 20, 21-year-old yeah. kid, new country, was always going to take time. Now, yeah. maybe it's different if the technical director, Ian Moody, has told the Vincent Tan, you know, we've got to sign him because he's going to go and score us 25 goals or whatever, and he is for one for now. And then that's had come out in an interview. Maybe that's a bit different. Yeah. But yeah, to me it was. I just it was really fascinating to have that discussion yeah. the other day. Unfortunately, it was off the record, so I can't say who it was. But it was. Uh, but, but it, it would surprise me. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if it's true, because you know, again, you know, we, we can't be unfair to Tan to say no, Moody's no. told him. Moody said, "Look, we've got a twenty-goal strike in here." But you know, at the end of the day, the manager has to decide whether it's the right time to play him. You know, it's a lot of pressure, and and I. You know, to be honest, I mean, eight million quid was a lot of money then. It's a lot of money today. But, you know, if Malky Mackay, as you said, because Tan didn't have that knowledge of football. I mean, if he'd given, like, if he, if if the direction of the club had been different and we kept Malky there, you know, I think he could have had, he would have brought on Cornelius in a way that given him a bit of confidence, maybe. Um, and obviously, as you said, he's a really young lad when he came to us. I mean, hindsight's been proven that, 
he hasn't done that well. Well, he scored since, goals, though. He has scored goals. He has scored like, he, like, he he has at scored, the top, yeah. top level, but he scored top goals level, wherever yeah. he's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, who knows? But I think you're right. I mean, it, it's it, it was such a shame during our history that that sort of episode went the way it did. Um, because I think, as I said, the connection with Malky with the fans was was unquestionable, really, and and, and he had great success. So, yeah, he'd, he'd have to be near the top. Um, so, what do you what do you think of Neil Warnock, Cy? Si? It's a weird one, mate. Um, I so I should requisite. I, I don't know. I should asterisk it with when Neil Warnock came into the football club was a period where I was incredibly frustrated with Cardiff City. I would, you know, off the back of things like the rebrand and, and things like that, I was I was not happy camper. So yeah. I wasn't, that's sort of season or two, I wasn't as engulfed in Cardiff as I've been since and I've been, as I'd been for, you know, 20 odd years before. I would, now, yeah. not to say that I wasn't, I didn't have any interest in it at all, but I certainly, yeah. I wasn't as entrenched in it. Um, the Russell Slade season was the one which killed it for me um, because yeah. I thought it was just such a, I just thought it was such a short-sighted, poor decision to put him in charge. And I know there's yeah. some people who think he did a good job and he did what he was supposed to do, which was work on the lowest budget possible. But like for me, yeah. it's like if you bring in a League One a best manager and then he signs a load of League One players you're only going to end up in one place. Um, now, yeah. luckily, we didn't end up in that place. Um, and he did all right. But um, that was the season which really hurt me. Uh, and I can only talk on a, you know, on a personal point of view. Um, I was excited when Neil Warnock took over because he's a proven championship manager. And I felt like with Neil Warnock, if you give him the tools that he wants in the short term he yeah. will be successful in the championship or well, he certainly would have been in 2017 18 that sort of period i don't know if i apply that same logic now you know yeah sort of several years later but but certainly at that point i mean, it felt i felt like if we gave him the tools we gave him the players that he wanted we probably be there or thereabouts in terms of promotion. However, you also, I kind of compare him to the championship version of Jose Mourinho in that, I not that he would spend as much money and, and he's quite as um, enigmatic as Jose Mourinho, but more so that when he leaves after a few years, you're going to have an aging squad. You know, you're not going to have a lot of sort of 21, 22 year olds in there who are going to be there for the future. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. a fair comment. And I, you know, I'm sure yeah. Neil Neil wouldn't dispute that that he relies on you know experienced, proven players. And look, yeah. he came in and he got us promoted. Um, you know, he steadied the ship in that first se when he came in midway through after Trollop left, and then yes. the next the next season he finished second in the championship. Um, yeah, you know, he couldn't have done any more. Um, but you look at the squad, and it is a lot of 28 and up. Um, yeah. I'm just having a quick look to see what the young players were. So you've got Callum Patterson at 23, Joe Rawls 25, Kadeem Harris 25, um, Gruchik, who obviously was on loan, Mark Harris, who played two games off the bench. Bamba. So it was the Hall 24. Um, can't see any others. And then the rest seem to be Matthew Kennedy played it a few games or he went out on loan actually so he didn't play for us that yeah. season yeah so there's think, not a lot of below 28 shall we say which is yeah, again yeah. like it's not um it's not necessarily a criticism because it worked and he got promotion and uh in that season i don't think the football was too bad i think it was direct but you know we played some good football and we scored some good goals i felt as neil warnock's tenure went on the football became more kind of route long one. Ball. yeah route one long ball and 
discussed something which there's a time and a place for it for me, but it's not the type of football which I really enjoy because I, I enjoy yeah. the tactical side of football. And, and I think that, you know, there is a time and a place for it, but I felt like yeah. You know, yeah. as, it, as it kind of went on. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you there. So, I mean, I think Warner was the right manager for us at that time, you know, after, you know, we had Trollope, Slade, oh, God, Ollie yeah. was there, Dave, Dave Kurz, David Kurz, late caretaker for a short time, um, Scott Young and Gavidon as well. But, you yeah. know, obviously he came in, he brought players like Sean Morrison, Manga, Bamba, you know, they, the Hoylet class, like, you know, these, mm. they, these were, so he had a real understanding of getting the right, and as you said, we, we paid a bit of money for some players because, you know, we had the experience of getting teams up from the championship. So we had the history. So it was right for Tan to back him based on his history, you know, and he got us to where we needed to get to. So I think he achieved what he set out to achieve. And I think the fans had a connection with him. And I think it was a lot of it's because we had that period of, of, of nothingness really over the last few years prior to that. You know, it was, it was not like you said, you, 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 you know, you weren't really interested as much because of the type of football and the managers we had. In, it, it was pretty dire. So, you know, Neil Warner galvanised the, the city, didn't he? In he, terms brought, of he, the brought, he brought me back, Neil Warner did. Brought like, me he back. brought me yeah, back. Exactly. And, Definitely. and I think I was the same. I think I got a season ticket that year after having a couple of years gap of, of not having one, you know, of going down to matches. So so you're absolutely right. He galvanised the, the club. And... But I think, there was, again, this is the thing I say, and it's easy with hindsight, but history tells you that Warnock wasn't a success in the Premier League, never had a history, really, of success. No. He had a complete understanding of the championship. He was the master, like you say, the Jose Mourinho of the championship. And that was when we should, and I know it's difficult, but we should have just sacked him, and we should have got someone else in who had that kind of, knowledge or, or a different approach because the Premier League is a different approach and um, and I think that was the mistake. Tan got it absolutely right with Warnock in the championship but then he made the mistake of that loyalty thing of well let's have a look at what he's done previously and there was, there was nothing to indicate and I know it can change with clubs but you know I don't think there was it was ever going to change so for me Warnock did what he did was liked by the fans a lot um but yeah, I think we should have changed it when he went up. You know, I, that's that's my view. So, but yeah, looking looking through that era, then I mean, like I said, you know, we've all looked at guys who've had promotions or cup finals because obviously, as we talked about, Dave Jones really not winning anything as such or, or getting a promotion. Um, but it, in your view, can we start saying who's your favourite manager? I think. My favourite manager is probably Malky. Like, yeah, I just think he be, he built on what Dave Jones had put in place, and I think he what he did was Dave Jones put the foundations in place, but didn't have the relationship with the fans and didn't get over the line, but played beautiful football and with some very big names managed to attract some big names to the foot club. And then Malky came in, built on that. Yes, maybe the football wasn't as silky and as good to watch, but he brought a winning mentality, which also brought the fans together with the football club and, and with the team. And, you know, yeah. a lot. It's interesting, though, because obviously Malky got them over the line into the Premier League. But actually, when you speak to some of those players who were. Um, who overlapped from Jones to Malky, a lot of them sort of, if you ask them who was their favourite manager to play in there, was Dave Jones. Yeah. Not, you know, not the manager who they won trophies with and got promoted, even though that moment of getting promoted was probably up there with the greatest moments in their career. So it's, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Um, I did want to say quickly on Neil Warnock as well. Um, Neil Warnock gets bonus points because he brought in Victor Camarasa, which is, one of my favourite city players of all oh, time. Amazing. Yeah. So he get he gets Absolutely. bonus points for that without a doubt. Yeah, that I forgot about him. So he, he was an outstanding midfielder. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. So I agree good. with you there. But yeah, I think um look, if we're talking favorite manager of all time, my favourite would be Malky. 
and probably like Eddie May because Eddie May is the the first manager that I remember as a kid being yeah like the Cardiff manager and he also I remember we saw him outside in Indian Park one day like after the game or something and he was just massive compared to me like he was yeah. just this huge guy and big sense of half as a young as a young like small little kid when you see someone so imposing size wise you almost expect yeah. them to be like especially back in the you know the 80s and 90s like you're expecting them to be a bit grumpy and a bit like yeah unapproachable and he was such such a nice person and such like a gentle giant if you like and i you yeah. know so for me like the no nostalgia in me says eddie may but the yeah the kind of when i look back at it i go with you know malky is probably my favorite and i gotta say I think for what Malky achieved in such a short space of time, he absolutely has to be in the conversation when you're talking about who is the greatest manager of Cardiff City of all time or whatever. And I think Dave yeah. Jones has to be in that conversation. I think yeah. probably Neil Warnock would be in the conversation because he also got promoted to the Premier League. But then for yeah. me, Frank Burrows has to be in the conversation. And I think even though it's be way, way, way before our era, you know, you have to uh, you have to acknowledge, um, you know, the the people who did things before before our time, and I think yes, um, of course, yeah. Like so, it was this difficult for us to, or diff certainly difficult for me to, you know, to really talk about them in any detail. You know, you have to make mention of Stuart, who who won the FA Cup for Cardiff, never been done yeah. since, should have been yeah. done since, should we add Dave Jones, but yeah. You know, well, we could have won. We could have won the league the year before, uh, site In uh, we, go, we only finished uh, on goal difference from. Yeah, Terry did a video uh, on it the other week. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that that period, you know, you would say is is our, our most successful. But I think you know, so so you're saying your favourite really is is your favourite is Malky or Eddie, and your most successful that you've seen would be Malky. Yeah, I think Malky. Um, I do, I do think you've got to put like. I think Frank Burrows has a massive shout in it. I think obviously Len Ashford, you know, Len, anyone who's got anyone who got promoted, I think you have to at least involve yeah. them in the conversation. I'm not saying they're automatically, you know, in the top three, in the top two, yeah. or whatever, yeah. but they're in the conversation. Um, I think the only one who makes the conversation for it who didn't win trophies or promotion is probably dave jones is there any other yeah. manager that you can think of who didn't win trophies no i, I not not in, a, in not in that era of the 80s 90s and 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 2000s so i mean i i you know like i said my favorite manager was frank burrows i think frank you know did a great job but we were in the fourth division so you've got to you've got yeah. to You've got, to, you've got to look at it on, you know, in terms of success, I think on levels, you know, I mean, that's the equivalent of Division 2, League 2 now. So I, as much as I love Frank Burroughs as a fan and Eddie May, I wouldn't put him in the same league from success-wise because, you know, you've got to put your Malkies up there at the top with, with probably Stewart, you know, in terms of, and I said, we had plenty of other managers in between, but... But I, I think, like I said, if you're looking at budgets, you know, when Frank Burroughs and Len Ashurst and they didn't have any money, you know, they didn't have a penny, but they got out of like, the old fourth division. Obviously, Eddie May was backed by Rick Wright. So he did have a bit of cash behind him. Again, he got the right players in. But I think with Eddie May, what you said, Si, was, was bang on. He, he's the type of guy you could have a pint with down the pub. Mm. And, and he would talk to anyone. You know, if someone come up to him, you know, he was he was very approachable, Eddie, whereas Dave Jones was complete opposite, you know, yeah. from a fan's point of view. And I think, you know, that that's that's how I look at it. So for me, Frank Burroughs is the fan's favourite with Eddie May slightly behind, but Malky the, the most successful. It'd be interesting to hear what fans of all ages who listen to podcasting and, and get their views. But I think everyone has different opinions depending, like you said, on when they started going down. You know, like I said, for me, you know, when I started going down and then I was 12, 13 in that promotion year, that was out of this world. You know, we're seeing Dave Bennett, 
I think that was the time actually we played Chelsea home in the FA Cup. Or oh, it might have been a league game, actually, sorry. And we was 3 0 up. And I was in the grandstand because I had a season ticket. And there was 11,000 11, fans there that day. And probably seven, 8,000 were from Chelsea mm. because they were, they were in the promotion. They were going up that year. I think it was Sheffield Wednesday and Newcastle went up that year. And, yeah. and honestly, God, I, when we were 3 0 up, I always remember Roger Gibbons scored. And it was before, I think it was before half time, the third one went in. And a Dr. Martin boot came flying down from the top of the grandstand, just missed my head. I was only 12, 13. And obviously I was in there with a load of skinheads who had, you know, the Union Jacks around them. Mm. And I always remember going to the toilet and then this guy, he, must, he was like six foot four skinhead, Union Jack around him. He said, oh, what's the score, mate? What's the... And I couldn't say 3-0. Like, I, I, he'd probably been in the bar all the, and I just said, oh, it's 0-0. I couldn't mm. say the score because I think I was the only, one of the only City fans in the grandstand that day. And I remember going home nine, ten minutes before the end of the game. So I thought, oh, we were three up for that stage. I thought, right, my grandparents lived down Wyndham Street in Canton. So it was about a ten minute walk. Got home, put grandstand on, said to my granddad, you know, fantastic performance. And it was three all. They scored three goals in the last few minutes. I think it was Pat Nevin, David Speedy or Kerry Dixon. Um, so, you know, that was there were some great memories during that time. But uh, yeah, for me, I said Malky would be the, the most successful. And, I, and as I said, Frank and, and, and Eddie would be the fans' favourites. So uh, fantastic time. But, but looking at it as well, in those 44 years, we've had kind of like 30 different managers. You know, it's, like I was saying, you know, a hell of a lot of managers in that period between the 80s and now. And only 23% of them would be classed as successful. So that's literally one in five. You know, mm. so, so this period we've got now where, you know, we've had a spell of you know, after, after Neil Warnock, you know, we've literally gone six years with you know a lot of managers a lot of mediocrity really and it'd be interesting now with Errol in his second year that we can maybe have a successful time because if you look through our history as I said over the last four years it tends to be a gap of four to six years for every success yeah and it, and you can never you know it's never an exact science but you just hope from 2018 when Neil Water took us up that we can sort of look at this period now, six years on, and say, you know, Errol's in his second year. I think it was the right thing to keep him. And let's hope Vincent's hand can back him in a way that he can sort of get into that mix of the top 10, you know. And, and I think hopefully City fans will have will have a more successful season this year. Um, and who knows where it takes us on. Indeed, mate. Um, so to wrap us up, I'm going to ask you to answer this question with a, a one-word answer. Um in 10 years' time, will we be discussing Errol Bullet in the conversation for greatest ever Cardiff City managers? So I'm asking you to look into the future a little bit, but only a one-word answer. Uh, I hate to say it, but no. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, Pam, Thanks. it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Uh, always enjoy chatting to you. Uh, Cheers, son. Look very much looking forward to uh, filming our little thing on Friday with uh, some other people. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh Make sure you are subscribed to Cardiff City World. Make sure you hit the bell button so you get notifications because we have uh, new content out every single day. Cardiff City content seven days a week. Make sure you've got your tickets for the Joe Ledley event, which is literally a week tomorrow, as is where, with when this is out. So uh, make sure you've got your tickets if there's any left. Nice one. Yeah.